it's about eight in the morning here on Tuesday, uh, June 26th, I believe, 2024. Uh, it's a warm day. It's 80 degrees, 88 percent humidity. The there's a small chance of rain on Thursday or tomorrow, and uh, we're looking at temperatures in the upper 90s, uh, and it gets down to the 80s at night. So we are in full-blown summer. Now, right now, a breeze is blowing from the south, and I'm actually feeling pretty comfortable. You can say I wear my hat here. <laughs> Try to keep the sun rays off my face. Let's take a look at what they did here in this section. This is the section, uh, this and the last section are just south of the areas where I felt like they were overgrazing in the last row. So I'm gonna look for signs of overgrazing um, and inspect their manure patties at the same time. So manure's looking okay. I see a lot of goat weed here, by the way, if you're wondering. Um, probably not as much as last year, but still plenty. So I imagine what happens is, I uh, hope the wind isn't bothering you guys. I imagine what happens is that as the spring grass, the rye grass dies off, um, that's the time when the, the goat weed wants to germinate. And so because there's not a lot of uh, summer grass growing down there uh, when the spring grass is done then the, the goat weed gets a chance at life if I had really strong summer grass if we have a warm spring and there's plenty of summer grass and the spring grass is a uh, you know competing with the summer grass then I imagine the goat weed probably wouldn't grow at all but yeah from what I'm seeing it does look like uh, you know, I'm, I'm seeing things like this, like this bothers me. This is grazed almost down to the ground as far as the cows can go. And that's a bunch of Dallas grass that probably looked not unlike that bunch right there. So they took it from like, a, you know, 8, 10, 12 inches, um, the leaves all the way down to 2 to 4 inches. That's a little bit more than I'd like them to do. It looks like they are attacking the Dallas grass. They like the Dallas grass. Um, maybe that's where they're getting all their protein from. And the Dallas grass, the way it grows, it doesn't spread out like the Bermuda grass. It grows in bunches. And in between the bunches, there's lots of space. There's a manure patty. It's kind of starting to stand up. A little bit past what I want it to do, but it's still pretty decent. It's still soft, not hard. That's what I want. So, yeah, so the Dallas grass, but over here, it looks like they didn't, they left some of it just alone. Like here's a bunch that they kind of ate the center of, but they left the rest alone. So, yeah, unless I give them even more space, I think they're just going to keep attacking the Dallas grass. Here's something over here, you know. So that's more than I want to see them graze. Hmm. This one actually looks pretty decent. Looks like that's what I want to see is them to go down and take, you know, a third of the leaf and leave two thirds alone. So this one might recover quickly. And these ones over here might recover quickly. So it's just a couple spots. For some reason, they go back to those empty spots and they graze it down to the ground. You know, and then over here, you can see they grazed it appropriately, you know. So I don't know what the rhyme or reason is behind it. It looks like they're just attacking certain spots. And uh, I guess I can give them even more area. Well, they completely missed this area. No, this is a, this is the new row. They haven't touched this yet. So. Yeah, so uh, what to do? Last year, my, my grazing strategy was to be very rapid, um, a three week rotation. Um, and the idea there was to do as little damage as possible, uh, give the summer grass a short recovery period and to come back to it. And I, I think that worked um, on parts of my pasture, on other parts of my pasture, I think it didn't help. Um, the parts that were already kind of thin, 
uh, they got a little bit too much pressure and they didn't recover. I'm speaking specifically about the middle part of my southern half. So um, this part also, this is the middle part of the northern half. It didn't do very excellent. It was not my worst part, but it wasn't my best either. So, you know, I could go to a rapid rotation like that with two herds like this, and I'm, I should be getting 50 sheep any day now. Um, with two herds like this, um, let's see. So if I have about 80 sheep, that's probably 10 cows worth. So it's still not quite the same size as this herd here. But uh, if I did a six week rotation, that might be the best. Uh, that's probably the fastest I can go, is a six week rotation with them offset by three weeks. Oh, I should also mention, I talked with my neighbor about the back 20, and they said that they plan on uh, uh, shredding it in August, okay? They just like to go back there and kill all the weeds, whatever's left. So I'm gonna send my cows back there in July and give them a little extra time and we're just gonna abuse that pasture, the back 20, um, get what we can out of it. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to rotate them in the back there. It's very hard to set up wire because of all the trees. Um, I could try. Uh, probably not daily moves, but maybe bi-weekly moves, moving them twice a week or something um, to avoid having them uh, you know, eat the new regrowth and damage the grass. Um, this is a fresh manure patty from this yellow cow, from this white cow, I mean. That looks pretty decent. She's looking pretty decent too. She's in pretty good condition. Too many flies, but there's not much I can do about that. So she's taking a single bite. I'm gonna chase her off here so I can see what a single bite looks like. Um, excuse me, bear lady. <laughs> She's like, are you going to eat it? This is what a single bite looks like. So I guess I'm not doing too bad. It's just a couple spots they took a second bite. And if that's the case, then I'm not too concerned. I think we have the right amount of area. If I were to go to three times a day move, uh, morning, noon, and evening, um, I could make the rows thinner, keep the same number of moves per row. Um, they would spend two and a third weeks in each row two and a third days i'm sorry um in each row and then that would do that i'm not thinking of doing that though that's just i think that's a little bit too much i don't have any reason not to except i don't want to uh come out here in the middle of the day but if it's just for a cattle move and that's all i do it might be worth it so i'll, I'll keep considering it but that's not really what I was anticipating to do this year, so. So, ugh. gotta check that wire is actually hooked up. I didn't get a shock. That's where I'm at. Um, I think they're grazing appropriately. It's just the, the caterpillar grass, the Dallas grass just grows in a way that when they graze it, it looks like they took too much, but that's just a single bite, so. You know, whether the Dallas grass is gonna do well versus the Bermuda grass, that remains to be seen. Um, over time, the grasses that do well will survive and thrive. And the grasses that don't do well for my style of rotating, um, they're gonna start to recede in the background. Um, they won't get the boost that the other grass is gonna get. So and that's kind of the plan is just let things grow naturally. And if I need to change something, then I change my technique rather than applying chemicals and things like that. All right, guys, have a great day. Take care. Bye-bye.